Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's how-to, we're gonna show you some basic techniques about how to get proper alignment in a screw conveyor assembly. And helping us out is a guy who's never been on the show before, so we have to be really nice to him, David Stronzek with Martin Sprocket and Gear. Welcome, Dave, how are you? Hey, Tom, it's good to be here, sir. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, we're in this magical little TV studio right here, and we get to do all these wonderful things. Oh, absolutely. And you're a big part of it, and we've got some great stuff going on here today. Day and, and I can't wait to talk about this because misalignment is so important in every mechanical system. I think you'll agree with that. But why is it even more important on screw conveyors? Misalignment in screw conveyor assemblies may accelerate premature wear or failure in components such as hanger bearings, end bearings, along with coupling drive and end shafts. Some of these worn items may eventually result in breakage of the screw, typically around the ends. Not good. That, that's a, that's a that's a lot and a lot of issues with misalignment and we want to avoid that so that's why you're here. Talk us through it. Well misalignment is typically very easy to avoid with a few simple steps. By following the steps correctly you can vastly extend the life of the assembled components and better performance of the conveyor system. I like that. I like things to last long. Now before we do that or we do anything we always want to make sure we wear a proper PVE, right? That's always important. Now we're not going to wear it for our demo assembly but you know if you're in the factory, if you're in the warehouse and you are doing this, make sure you wear the proper PPE because safety is always the most important thing. All right, Dave, how do we get started? Well for this procedure we're going to need a ratchet size for the appropriate hardware, mm -hmm. two to four angle clips, a section of piano wire the length of the conveyor, and a level. Keep in mind when performing this procedure, the bolts are generally kept loosed initially to allow for adjustment and then tightened down once they are determined level with the fixed plane. In this case, the piano wire. I see we got all our tools here. I'm following so far. We're all good. So, all right, let's get started. We've got our piano wire hooked up. How do we get going here? Well, conveyors can be mounted at different angles and orientations. However, you want to first ensure that the mounting points are level and true. In the case of the example horizontal conveyor, the mounting surface will be the table. Okay, so we got our level table, so we're good there. What's next? Attach the piano wire the full length of the conveyor at the center line. An optional way of mounting the wire is at the top of the conveyor. Ensure that the piano wire is pulled tight to avoid sagging. I got that one. I got my conveyor, and you're the surveyor. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, this is not good. I, I got nothing here today. Okay, so our piano wire is good. What's our next step? Dave? The next step is to measure alignment in both the horizontal and vertical orientations. It may be necessary to shim the trough at the support points to adjust the trough vertically and to pull at the, at the support points to adjust horizontally. As we move along the length of the conveyor, tighten trough flange bolts keeping the trough assembly true to the piano wire. The maximum deviation in either direction at any point along the length of the conveyor is approximately one-eighth of an inch. All right, uh, what do you say? You do your side, I'll do my side, we'll compare and see how they do. Oh, All okay, right, sounds go. good, Tom. We're going to start vertically, okay. right beneath the trough flange at the top there. Okay. And I'm getting roughly five and a half inches. All right, there you go. Let me just see. See how good this guy really is. Right. Uh, actually, you're pretty good. Because I'm like right at five and a half inches too. Oh, fantastic. Okay, now we have to take a second measurement, right? Absolutely. Okay. We're going to check uh, the orientation in the horizontal direction there. Right. And I'm getting about one and seven eighths on my end here, Tom. All right, let's see. If you match this side, I'll be totally impressed. That's it. Yeah. No, that's spot on, man. So definitely within the one eighth inch, which is what we were looking for. Yes, sir. I know that earlier you said that the bolts were loose and as we do everything, but as we tighten the bolts, once our measurements are all the same, I know we always talk about torque value. We've done that in other videos as well. So torque value is something we should consider, correct? Yes, sir. That's definitely something you want to make sure is uh, standard assembly bolts should be torqued to the installation manual suggested values. This documentation should be provided with every run of assembled conveyor. Once the conveyor is anchored and the bolts are tightened after checking for proper alignment, you're ready to install the internal components. All right, so I've done all that, but is there anything else that I need to be aware of so I know everything is just right? The internal components must also be aligned using similar steps. However, worn hanger bearing and coupling shafts can also greatly contribute to misalignment. As either of these components experience wear greater than approximately one-eighth of an inch, it's time for replacement. 
A good preventative maintenance program is a great way to be sure that good alignment is practiced at all times. All right, excellent, Dave. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. That was David Stronzek. He is with Martin Sprocket and Gear. And if you have any questions about anything you saw here today, you can always contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, and they'll be able to help you out. Thanks so much for watching today's how-to video. Remember, you can catch more videos at mihowto.com with me, Tom Clark, as your host. We'll see you next time.